Hi, I'm Ashley Edwards. I'm a livestock agent and coordinator for animal science programs in the central, northeast, and northwest regions for the LSU Ag Center. We're here today to talk a little bit about reproductive efficiency and things that you can look at during the breeding season to help increase both weaning weights and weaning rates, so the percentage of calves that you have weaned. So we know as cow-calf producers, it's our goal to have more calves to sell at weaning. We also know that for our seed stock guys, we want to be able to sell more calves and also have calves that are earlier maturing um, so that way that they hit sexual maturity earlier, hit puberty earlier. So what are some things that we can look at during the breeding season to help make us more efficient in terms of reproduction? So three things that we really focus on or that you can really focus on during the breeding season to help make you as efficient as possible, help give you more calves on the ground throughout your 60 to 90 day breeding season would be the number of cows that come into heat, how many of those heats are actually fertile, so how many heats um, actually produce a good fertile oocyte or egg, and then how many cows that come into heat does the bull actually breed. So if you look at that, if you look at three things, if you look at percent of cows coming into heat, percent of fertile heats, and percent of cows that the bull actually breeds, and you take those three factors, and that will give you reproductive efficiency for your breeding season. So let's say that you had a really good, um, really good bull, your cows were in good shape, everything was pretty, pretty good, and you had 95% of your cows come into heat, 95% of those heats were fertile, and 95% of those cows were bred by your bull or bulls. Now that does not mean that 95% of your herd is going to have a calf actually hit the ground. Instead, what you do is you actually multiply those three things together. So if you do 95, 95, and 95 all multiplied together, you actually get about 85 to 86%. So we're never going to hit 100%, right? No matter what, we're never going to have 100% of our cows have, have calves that make it all the way to weaning. So what are some things that we can look at and that we can do? Well, if we want to tighten those numbers, if we want to tighten that reproductive efficiency even more, then I want to look at those three factors, number of cows in heat, number of fertile heats, number of cows that are bred by the bull, particularly on that first estrus cycle. Okay, so within the first 21 days of the breeding season, we know that our estrus cycle is 21 days long. So what we would do is we would look then and we would say, okay, let's say 95% across the board again. 95% of my cows came into heat the first 21 days. 95% of those heats were fertile. 95% of those were actually bred by the bull. That's gonna give me about an 86, 85, 86% of those cows that were bred, um, a firmly, firmly bred and actually conceived during that first 21 days. Well, that's pretty good, right? You have 85 hit, 85, 86% hit then. If you have a 60 to 90 day breeding season, then you still have another 40 to 70 days or so, give or take, to get the rest of those calves, the rest of that 14, 15% of those cows, excuse me, bred. That's not too bad. Now, does that happen all the time? Not really, okay? It can be kind of tough to get 95% of them in that first 21 days, um, but it, it's doable to get the majority of them there. So what benefit does it give you for that first 21 days? Why am I so focused on that? Well, research has shown that if you can get those cows bred in the first 21 days, not only does it give them more time to recu recuperate and recover, um, more time for that postpartum interval, at the conclusion of the calving season before the next breeding season. So once she has this calf, before you start your breeding season all over again, um, if she calves earlier, if she breeds earlier in the breeding season, she calves earlier in the calving season, she's got more time to gain weight back um, for her uterus to get back into a shape that can support pregnancy all over again. So that's good for the cow because then again, we can breed her within that first 21 days, the first heat in the breeding season all over again. And you just kind of keep having that effect from season to season. What does that mean for profitability for your checkbook, your pocketbook, your bank account at the end of the day? If I have calves that are born during the first part of the calving season, that means again that their moms were bred during the first part of the breeding season. But if they're, if they're calving early, if they're born early, 
then that means that they have more time to grow, more time to put pounds on. So that's going to help increase your weaning weight and that's going to help increase um, the days that that calf has um, before weaning, before the average herd um, is weaned. And for our seed stock guys, then we've got some that are hopefully hitting puberty. They're ready to sell a little bit earlier. Um, they hit sexual maturity earlier compared to their counterparts that are born within that same season. Research has shown that if we can get these calves born on the first um, part of the calving season, so it means their mom again has been bred during the first part, the first heat, compared to even the second. So compared to days 22 to 42 um, of that breeding season, if we can get her bred on that first heat compared to the second heat, then those calves are, will likely gain an extra 40 to 50 pounds compared to the calves born on the second or third heat within the breeding season. I would actually even more compared to the ones born in the, in the third heat. So what can 40 pounds do for you? What can 40 to 50 pounds more per calf on more calves do for you? Um, if you look at, let's say that first heat again, and you look at say, instead of 95% across the board, 90% of the cows came into heat during the first 21 days. 90% of those heats were fertile heats and 90% of them got bred by a bull. Instead of having that 85 to 86% that we talked about earlier um, in terms of calves being born, you're gonna have like 71%, 71, 72% somewhere in there. And that's a pretty big change, just dropping a little bit on each one of those particular factors. So what can you do to start pushing those cows up earlier into the breeding season and subsequently pushing those calves up, having them born a little bit earlier? Um, one thing is estrus synchronization, and it doesn't have to be costly. Um, you can do a one shot of prostaglandin, and you might not get the 95% that we're talking about here. That's a pretty, pretty high number, pretty steep number there, but you can start to push 70 to 80% of your cows up towards the beginning of that breeding season. Um, so that would be one shot of prostaglandin that you can do. There's some other options in there as well to get a little bit of a tighter synchrony. Then I also have some other videos um, where I've gone in and talked about estrus synchronization for turning a bull out, not doing AI, just natural breeding. Um, Mr. Jason Holmes out of the Northeast region, he has also talked about the economics of it and he has a great video that goes in and shows, okay, if you go in and implement these programs, if you get them born earlier in the breeding season, these are the numbers, the changes that you can see in the profit for your herd. So both of those videos are going to be linked here in the, in the video description for this so that you can go back and refer to them. We also have a full webinar where we both come in and talk about that. So all of that information will be in there to help give you a better idea of economics and how that can help you. What can you do to start now? Um, let's say you've already had your breeding season, okay, your bulls have been pulled out. Well, you can go in and you can look at your records. You can see um, based off of birth dates of calves, you can see what cows tend to calve earlier in the, in the calving season. They were bred earlier in the breeding season. So start going through your records. Look at that. For your next breeding season, um, consider the estrus synchronization. Consider some sort of estrus detection aid. We can't all go out and we can't just sit and watch them and, and see when our cows come into heat, make sure the bull's mounting them. But you can buy estrotech patches. You can, um, it's a little bit more labor intensive, but you can do a chin ball marker. There's a lot of different estrus detection aids out there. An estrotech patch um, is what, what I recommend because it's really easy. Um, you can pull them up and change them out um, as needed. So every 21 days, you would change those out on your cows to see who's coming back into heat. They're $2.50 to $3 a piece. Um, so let's say you did an estrotech patch. Let's say you did a prostaglandin shot, just one. You're looking at five to six dollars there um, that you're spending. Yes, that's more input cost. But again, go back and think, what does an extra 40 to 50 pounds on a calf, on just one calf, bring you? And then think, okay, what if you were able to get more calves born earlier um, or even more calves out of your whole season? And I think once you sit down and you look at that, and you really start to say, okay, these are the cows that are bred, these are the cows that are coming into heat, you'll be doing really well. If you have any questions on this, if you wanna get better at looking at all of these things, um, please just give me a call. My contact information has been listed here in the video. Um, you can also call your local extension agent and they will help you out with all of that.